Hey, um, how many of you guys know a guy named Harry Reid? Uh, you don't like Harry? And there's millions and millions of dollars being dumped behind Harry Reid so he can go to Senate and do things that we don't want him to do. But this next person had the guts, the guts to go up against him, and she knocked him pretty heavy. Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for a daughter of Nevada, Sharon Angle. Thank you. Thank you, Free Staters. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. I, that's why I came all the way from Nevada, because many of you walked up to me today and said, I sent you money. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. You know, that's what kind of scares those liberals to death. They don't get it, that we could raise $30 million to fight Harry Reid from donations from people just like you, who sent 25, 35, 100. They don't understand that we are not following a person. We're following principles. We're not an organization, we're an organism. Thank you so much for standing up for freedom. People uh, watched the caricature that Harry Reid painted of me in the press and they said, who is the real Sharon Angle? So I wrote a book, it's called The Right Angle. <laughs> <laughs> and I have it back here. I, I write in that book about the campaign. Uh, one of the sections is entitled, Did Harry Reid Steal the Election? You want to read that one? <laughs> and I donated the proceeds of the book to a pack called Our Voice. We're going to put all of that money toward elections here in the United States for Senate seats. We're going to change them from blue to red and remove <laughs> Harry Reid from the Senate leadership. Our other mission, of course, is to make sure that our vote counts. That is our voice, and we might not have secure elections across the land. Well, I, I want to tell you that that caricature is a little bit warped. I'm a person who grew up in Reno, Nevada, in my dad's small business. Oh, I cleaned toilets, made beds, those kinds of things in this motel that my mother and dad owned. I went to college there in Reno and I got my degree in liberal arts. I'm an oil painter. That drives them crazy too. I changed my major to education when my husband and I married and we knew we were going to be living in rural Nevada. When my son was six years old, he failed kindergarten. So as an educator, I said, I'll take this boy home and, and teach him at home, homeschool him, until a judge said, I know it's the law in Nevada that you can homeschool your children, but the law ought to say you can't homeschool unless you live more than 50 miles away from the nearest school. That's when I realized that I needed to be more than just a voter, that the government was intruding upon my family. I got involved at the precinct level, and I want to encourage you all to do that as well, because if we're going to have a secure vote, we need people working in precincts. We had a, an occasion to call in during the election, and one of my callers just said, may I speak to Darlene? The lady said, why do you want to speak to Darlene? He said, well, I'm from Republican headquarters. I want to talk to her about the election. She said, do you know that you've called a Democrat household? He said, yes, ma'am, but Darlene's registered Republican. He said, she says, do you know that Darlene is only 11 years old? And he said, ma'am, do you know that Darlene has voted in the last two presidential elections? That's why we need precinct workers, so get involved at that level. The next level, I went, I, I ran for a school board and I served on a school board for a term and then when my son, the same one that I was fighting to homeschool, said he wanted to get his master's degree, I said, please move home, honey, it will be much better on mom and dad if you do that. And he said, I will, mom, under two conditions. I said, well, that'll be interesting. What would those two conditions be? He said, number one, get a life, and number two, it can't be me. So I ran for the state legislature in Nevada, and I won. 
About halfway into that first session, I was coming home every night about 10.30 and he met me at the door and he said, Mom, are you ever going to cook dinner again? And I said, oh honey, I got a life and it isn't you. <laughs> we have lots of living to do, us. We need to do this. We need to get involved on the precinct level. We need to run for office. We need to show America that we're not done yet. We're going to get off our big fat sofas, get out there and work for freedom for our children and our grandchildren. I want you to come back and get a book. I'm going to be signing them back here. But I also want you to sign our Team Hobbit Express. We are traveling across the country in tandem with the Tea Party Express and we named our little buggy the Team Hobbit Express to send a couple of messages. The first one, of course, is to Maxine Waters. We're not going to hell. We're going first to Florida and then to D.C. and to every state house in this nation. We are not going away. Second message is to John McCain in the Wall Street Journal when he said Sharon Angle and the rest of those Tea Party hobbits need to go back to Middle Earth and get in their holes. <laughs> We're not, we want him, the Lord of the Tarp, to read to the end of the story. If he did, he would realize that the hobbits are the heroes and we win in the end. We're going all the way in 2012. Thank you so much for being here. Live free or die. Thank you so much. I just love all these people from around the country who know our motto so well.